Hello, my name is Colin Ward, and today I'm going to be talking about the parasitic tragus disease, also known as American trypanosomiasis, an arthropod transmitted disease that is common in most of Central and South America. Here's just some general information about the disease itself. Chagas disease, or American trypanosomiasis, is caused by a protozoan extracellular parasite present in the blood called Trypanosoma cruzi. The arthropod vector that transmits the disease is an assassin bug called Trytoma infestans, which is native to Latin America. Immediately after infection, the disease has an acute phase where the parasite is present in the blood very readily, and if left untreated, it can become chronic and more severe, therefore permanent damage may occur. These symptoms can be anywhere from non-existent to fatal, depending on the severity of the infection. The disease was once found only in Central and South America, but is now spread to many other continents throughout the world. Chagas disease gets its name from the Brazilian physician who discovered it in 1909 named Dr. Carlos Chagas. He first discovered the trypanosome present in tritoma infestans, more commonly known as the kissing bug, in 1908, which he correctly believed to be the cause of a disease the insect was carrying. Over the next two years, Dr. Chagas researched the parasite exhaustively and was able to single-handedly describe its complete life cycle and medical significance to human. It was not until several decades after the discovery, however, that Chagas disease would become recognized as important because until that point there was no major outbreak. Since it was not seen as important, Chagas was never awarded the Nobel Prize for his impressive research. Although it was not discovered until 1909, it has been estimated by paleoparasitologists that Chagas disease has affected humans for approximately 11,000 years. Chagas disease is distributed mainly throughout 21 countries in Central and South America. More impoverished rural areas tend to harbor the disease more often than in more wealthy areas because they cannot afford treatment or control of the kissing bug vector. Originally, the disease was confined to Latin America, however, in the last few decades, the disease has become increasingly more present in Canada, the U.S., many European countries, and some Western Pacific countries as well. The shift is largely due to an increase in tourism to the areas where the kissing bug is present. Around 8 to 11 million people are affected by the disease worldwide, and approximately 20,000 die annually. The causative agent of Chagas disease is the flagellate protozoan trypanosoma cruzi that lives half its life cycle as an extracellular parasite in the blood of many mammals, including humans. It belongs to the kingdom Excavata, or Protista, Phylum Euglenozoa, the class Canadoplastida, the order Trypanosomatida, the genus Trypanosoma, and the species Cruzi. Protozoans of the class Canadoplastida have a mitochondrial structure called a canadoplast that is unique to this class. Canadoplasts are a network of circular DNA inside large mitochondria that contain many copies of the mitochondrial genome. Possibly one of the reasons Chagas disease is lifelong, if untreated, is because triatomes have the ability to rapidly change the proteins on their membranes in order to avoid the immune system. There are also other macromolecules present on their surfaces which allow them to invade their host. The transmission vector for Chagas disease is the assassin bug triatoma infestans, or the kissing bug. They belong to the kingdom Animalia, phylum Arthropoda, class Hexapoda or Insecta, order Hemiptera or the true bugs, family Reduvidae, subfamily Trivitominae, genus Tritoma, and species Infestans. There are other vectors that transmit the disease as well, however, Infestans is the most common. They are blood-sucking insects, and they do so mainly at night. They can be found mostly in the cracks and crevices of houses where they wait for their next blood meal. Tritoma Infestans undergoes simple metamorphosis and has two life stages, however, there are several nymphal instars. They feed on many different animals such as mammals, birds, and reptiles. After they take their blood meal, if a triatoma is infected with a trypanosoma, they will leave them in their feces which will enter the wound and infect the host. Trypanosoma cruzi has two major life stages, the triatome bug stage and the human stage. During these two stages, the parasite undergoes four different phases depending on where they are in their life cycle. Those stages are metacyclic trypanosomastigotes, amastigotes, trypanostomastigotes, and epimastigotes. The tritone life stage begins when the trypanomastigotes get ingested by a bug vector during a blood meal. After ingestion, the parasites transform into epimastigotes in the midgut and they begin to multiply. Another transformation occurs once the trypanosomes reach the hindgut where they become metacyclic trypanomastigotes and they multiply once again. The wound from a blood meal taken by the vector begins to itch, forcing the host to scratch, which will rub feces into it. These species contain the parasite. The human life stage begins once the triatome vector's feces enter the wound from a previous blood meal. 
Once in the new host, the metacyclic trypanomastigotes penetrate various cells where they differentiate into amastigotes and multiply by binary fission. Once the amastigotes are released from the cells, they become trypanomastigotes, which can infect other cells or will be ingested by a new triatome vector during a blood meal, and the cycle continues. Chagas disease has acute and chronic phases, and if left untreated, the infection can be lifelong. The acute phase begins right after the initial infection and can last for months. In some cases, people may have the disease and show no symptoms, so they go their whole lives without knowing they carry it. The initial indication of Chagas disease is the swelling of the face and eyelids, usually around the bite or if feces were introduced into the eye, and this is called Ramana's sign. There are some rare and severe cases where the acute phase of the disease resulted in heart, muscle, or brain inflammation. There is a point between the acute and chronic phases called the chronic intermediate, which is the point where there are few parasites left in the bloodstream and the symptoms recede. This is often misinterpreted as becoming healthy, but in fact this is just the point where the disease begins to get much worse. 20-30% to 30 of people in the chronic intermediate phase can develop fatal medical problems, which include heart rhythm abnormalities causing sudden death, a dilated heart, and dilated esophagus. People with a suppressed immune system, like those with AIDS or undergoing chemotherapy, can reactivate the symptoms even if they become asymptomatic because the body can no longer fight off the invaders. There are different diagnostic tests for individuals in either the acute or chronic phase because the chronic phase is more difficult to assess. Microscopic examination of the patient's blood smear can be used to determine if they are infected with Chagas disease in the acute phase. Trypanosoma cruzi can be confused with other trypanosome species, so various tests are done to distinguish them apart. Diagnosis during the chronic phase requires that all of the patient's symptoms and the likelihood of being affected are taken into account, and several serological tests can be done as well, just to be sure. Since there are fewer parasites in the blood during this phase, even after testing, the results can still be inconclusive. Both phases of the disease are treatable, however, the sooner the treatment is started, the better. There are two major antiparasitic drugs currently available, and they are both 100% effective if administered soon after infection. These drugs are called benzonidazole and nifirtamox. If the patient has chronic Chagas disease, then specific treatment for cardiac or digestive problems should be sought out also. The disease is a major problem in Latin America and is expensive to treat everyone who has the disease, so it largely goes untreated there. There is no vaccine for Chagas disease as of yet, however they are currently developing one. The most common and most effective control for the disease is using insecticides to kill their triatome vector. The screening of blood and organ donations is also a good preventative measure because blood transfusions and organ transplants are some of the major ways the disease is spreading outside of Latin America. Also, they are now beginning to implement earlier detection protocols and treatment of congenital cases to avoid the mother passing the disease on to her child. To summarize, Chagas disease is caused by the protozoan extracellular parasite called Trypanosoma cruzi. Its principal vector is Tritoma infestans, more commonly known as the kissing bug. First signs of infection is Ramana sign, which is the swelling of one side of the face around the eye. Treatment is very effective if caught early on in the acute phase, however it becomes more difficult if the disease becomes chronic. The best way to prevent against the disease is control against its vector. Further information on Chagas disease can be found in these references. Thank you for listening.